thing I ever do. Sorry, Colonel. Oh. Can't say I didn't warn you. Let's get out of here. I'd like to kill the arrogant fool, but I suppose it's going to make too much noise. No time for that. We've got to separate and escape. There's a car down the street you can use, Major. And you? I'll manage. Then we'll meet as we planned. At Dongra Edao. At our rendezvous. <laughs> Precious plans concealed upon me. I left Vienna speeding westward in the car Blank Iron had stolen. And it was a wild ride over rough, deserted roads and highways with my foot jammed down upon the floorboard, nursing every bit of speed I could. Although I had a few hours store, I knew the alarm would soon be out and the roads would be thick with men and cars searching for me, waiting to kill me and take back the secret papers. Instinct led me westward and southward toward the Danube, the only hope of quick escape. Until at last, the sputtering engine told me that the gas was gone. And then I struck out through the forest, knowing that the Germans were not far behind me. All that night, and still another day and night, I stumbled blindly through the forest. I dared not stop to rest or read the papers that I'd captured, for they were all around me. I knew von Sturm was at my heels. Watching every opportunity, using every trick I knew, I managed to evade them and struggled onward, tired and worn and hungry, toward the river and escape. And on my fourth day of wandering, I crossed a hill and saw the Danube there below me. Stand to there. Stand to Hold the line. Want to get in the way? Aye, Captain. Captain Shank. Oh, Captain Shank. Huh? Well, well, what's the matter? This man here, Captain, just came on board, wants a job. Oh? So? Yes, Captain, I need a job. Ever worked on river barges before? Well, yes. Yes, I have. I, I'm an engineer. Hmm. Could use another engineer. Long trip ahead. Well, I can handle the job, Captain Shank. Hmm. All right, it's yours. Take this string of barges all the way down the Danube with me, and it's worth five marks a day. Good enough. And uh, what is our destination? Well, half the cargo goes to Sevastopol. Yes, Captain. And the rest goes to a port over close to the mountain, a place called Donra Edao. <laughs> Small port, but important. Front line of the war, not more than 30 or 40 miles from here. Other side of the mountain. Yes, I know. This all used to be Russian country. Why the... Oh. Hmm? Army officials there coming aboard. Wonder what they want. I don't think I'll stay to find out. Must be a couple of colonels among them. Secret service. Hmm. Uh, can I help you, gentlemen? You have a man on board named of Herr Honey. Honey? Why, uh, why, of course. Uh, new man. He's here, Colonel von Stumm. He's here. Oh, well, well. So I have at last caught up with him. Where's this man, Captain? Why, uh, over there in his cabin. He went inside when he saw you coming. Oh, he did, huh? <laughs> Get your pistols ready. The man's dangerous. He may try anything. Now, Captain. Yes, sir. This cabin here. This is it. Then throw open the door and let us kill the rat we have trapped. Why, he's gone! So my arrival at Dongra Eda was somewhat icy cold and wet. Although I had escaped von Sturm again, there wasn't much relief in knowing that he was so close behind me, trailing me, guessing my every move. The day was soon at hand, however, for our rendezvous, and I waited at a table in a small sidewalk cafe, the appointed place at the appointed time. 
Soon, two figures approached me. I presume this gentleman wouldn't mind if we sat here? I hope not. Sandy, blink eye, and welcome. <laughs> sit down, sit down. Hello, Dick. We meet again, eh, Major? Yes, and it's good to see you both. Uh, blink eye, you, you had trouble? Not a bit, Major. My life's been quiet since you left me. <laughs> you, Sandy? Well, nothing happened on my sea journey, Dick, but since I arrived a week ago, I've been up in the mountains hmm? talking with the natives. Oh, tell me. The nomad tribes are in an ugly mood. Why, Sandy? Because their prophets foretold the arrival of a leader who's soon to appear and lead them into battle. A prophecy. He's sort of a legendary figure. A man they've never seen before. And his name? Green Mantle. Oh, that, that confirms the papers, the plans we stole, Major. It does, Blank Iron. What's all this about, Dick? We also know something of Green Mantle. Because we stole the plans of this uprising from von Sturm. The German Secret Service? Mm hmm. Look here, Sandy. All this? Yes, Sandy. This is part of the secret of Green Mantle that I've carried halfway across Europe. You're right about the prophecy, the legend of Green Mantle. But listen, the Germans plan to produce a live man, a leader of flesh and blood Green Mantle to fulfill that prophecy, to lead the nomad tribes against our allies. But that's impossible. The Green Mantle doesn't exist. Not unless the Germans produce a bogus leader, a man who claims to be Green Mantle. Oh, so that's their plan. A hoax seems incredible, but I can see that it might work. Right now, the natives are restless, waiting for the prophecy to come true. They'd follow almost anybody into battle. Then we've no time to waste. That uprising must be stopped. But what can we do, Major? We must find out the identity of the man who dares to pose as Green Mantle. But how? We must go to the only man who can tell us. We must go to the only place that we've yet to visit. Eh? Where? The control point of this entire uprising. The headquarters here of the German Secret Service. And Colonel von Stumm. Dick, are you mad? They've been after, after us ever since Vienna. Yes, I know, I know. It, it's like putting our heads in the mouth of a lion. But if you're with me... Count me in, Major. Of course, Dick. Then I have a plan for learning the rest of the secret of Green, Green Mantle. And the first step is to surrender to Colonel von Sturm. Well, gentlemen, I must say I never expected to catch all three of you. To have you standing before me here, <laughs> helpless in my own office. <laughs> Nevertheless, Colonel, here we are. And at my mercy. <laughs> I don't know the meaning of that word. I'll make you three regret the day you ever joined the British Secret Service. Because I can assure you, gentlemen, your death will not be quick. Why, Careful, you... Careful, Blankine. I warn you. Stand against that wall. The three of you. This lug on my desk is not an ornament. We understand, Colonel. Now, before you are taken away, I have a surprise for you. Since you have all expressed such an interest in Green Mantle, I thought I'd let you see him. What? Green Mantle? Yes, Major. But that's impossible. It's only a legend. Then watch, and you will see a legend materialize. I'll be ready, Dick. Not yet. Wait. Rasta Bay! Rasta Bay! Come in here! Rasta Bay? Have I heard that name before? Rasta Bay. You call me, Colonel? Come here. Oh, I remember him now. I saw him in Vienna. Look at his cape, Major. Emerald green, the emblem of green mantle. Rasta Bay. Yes, Colonel? Show these gentlemen your beautiful green cape. Uh, yes, sir. Ah. You see? That's good. <laughs> uh, now tell them what your new name is going to be in just a few hours. My name will be Green Mantle. I will be great man. Hero. Great man. All right, man, now. Catch his attention. I'll grab the gun. <laughs> I will be hero. Green mantle. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> You're excellent for the past. <laughs> I will be greatest man in... Look out, Colonel. <laughs> no, you don't, Colonel. Oh, my pistol. Careful there, Colonel. I've got the gun now. You all right, Sandy, Major? Yes, all right. Yes. No, you can't get away with it. Keep him covered, blink -on. Yes, Major. What you do? What you do? Take off that cape. <laughs> no. I, I know take off. I am hero. That's what you think. Take off that cape. No. No, I, I run away. I run away. I'll take care of that. <coughs> oh, what have you done? You have killed him. Oh, no, Colonel. He's just wounded. Now, keep quiet, Sandy. Yes, Dick. The green cape. Grab it. Right. What are you doing? You can't do that. Colonel, if you don't keep still, I'm going to bust you over the head again. What, what, you, what are you going to do? I'll tell you what we're going to do, Colonel von Sturm. The nomad tribesmen are going to be led into battle after all, but they won't be led against our side as you'd planned. Instead, they'll attack and fight the Germans. No! 
No! You can't do that! No! Not so much noise there, Colonel. All right, Dick, I'm ready to ride. You look fine, Sandy. It's just like it was made for me. <laughs> Maybe it was. Well, let's go, Dick. All right, and blink on Yes, Major. You'll stay here and watch the Colonel? Of course, Major. Be careful von Sturm doesn't play any tricks on you. Uh, I've got him covered. Good luck. We'll have to hurry, Sandy. Long ride to the mountains. I saw some horses outside. That'll be the quickest way. I only hope the natives wait until... Well, I guess the colonel tried to play a trick. And didn't get away with it. The natives were assembled and waiting as we rode into their camp. I stood aside there, watching Sandy as he moved up through the milling mass of men. And a hush fell over them, like a spell. And Sandy spoke out, loud and clear. Men of the mountains, your prophets have told you that Green Mantle would come and lead you into battle. I ask you now to follow me. To attack the Germans who cringe beneath the blows of our allies. If you believe your prophets, if you believe the legend of Green Mantle, then follow me to victory, into battle against the Germans. Sandy rode alone, out through the mountain path. And he was almost beyond their sight before the first few natives took their guns and rode behind him. Then others fell in behind the leaders. And there were more and more. Until at last, every man of them rode out, roaring through the mountain pass, storming toward the German lines to crack the eastern front. very front, a single man with sandy hair, a bright green cloak. But the prophecy had come true. The long-looked-for revelation was a fact. The prophets of the people had not failed. Green Mantle had appeared at last. Adventure Ahead has presented the famous John Buchan story, Green Mantle, in a radio dramatization by Tom Goutte. In today's play, the part of Dick Hannay was played by Alexander Scourby, Guy Spall as Blenkern, Jack Stanley as Sandy, and E.A. Krumschmidt as von Stumm. Others in the cast were Horace Bram, Guy Sorrell, Len Schurer, Kathleen Cordell, Charmé Allen, and Guy Sorrell. The entire production was under the direction of Herbert Rice. NBC and its affiliated independent stations present Adventure Ahead as a public service. (laughs) 